the production possibilities curve model. This is the first economic model that we will study in economics. This is going to be a slightly longer lecture. So basically, I'm going to focus on the production possibilities curve model. I'm going to talk about the assumptions of the model, um, increasing versus constant opportunity costs and the features of the model. The fact that it's a visual illustration of the concepts of opportunity cost, scarcity, choice, unemployment of resources, efficiency, actual growth and growth in production possibilities. So let's get started. So this is what a production possibilities curve looks like when we are assuming constant opportunity costs. So the assumptions of the model are that there are only two goods or two products being produced here, good A and good B. We're also assuming that the resources are equally suited for the production of both goods. Okay, there is constant opportunity cost producing, as you can see here, producing 10 more units of good B always requires sacrificing five units of good A. The opportunity cost is constant. This is a typo. It should be suited. I apologize. All right, now let's have a look at all these different points. So point I and double I. These are points that are on the PPC itself. They represent combinations of output where there is full employment of resources and maximum efficiency. Point triple I, this is a combination of output that is unattainable. It's an unattainable combination of output given the current state of technology and the amount of resources available. Point IV, so any point inside the PPC, um, it represents a combination of output where either some resources are unemployed or there is inefficiency. Any move from point IV to point I or point double I, so any move from um, a combination of output inside the PPC to a combination of output on the PPC represents actual growth. This can be accomplished through increasing employment of available resources or improvements in efficiency. Now this is the more common PPC that you will see in most econ courses and textbooks. Uh, this is the PPC with increasing opportunity cost. Again, the assumptions, that we assume there are only two goods. In this case, you've got burgers on the y-axis and cars on the x-axis. And of course, we're assuming that resources are not equally suited for the production of both goods. There is increasing opportunity cost. This is actually a more realistic assumption. As you can see, moving from point A to point B, where you are increasing the production of cars by 10 units, um, the economy is sacrificing about 250 burgers. However, moving from point B to point C, increasing the production of cars by another 10 units, um, you see a much bigger sacrifice. Um, the economy is sacrificing about 750 um, burgers that could have been produced. And that's because as you increase the production of one good, you're not just taking resources from the production of other good, but these resources that you are taking from the production of the other good could actually be more suited for the production of the other good. So you have an increasing opportunity cost. Um, at some point, you're taking resources that are actually better suited for the production of burgers and you're trying to use them to produce cars. So any movement from one point to the other will represent an increasing opportunity cost. The PPC can also be shown to uh, can also be used to illustrate growth and production possibilities. This happens when there is an increase in the quantity or quality of resources. Um, maybe there has been investments in um, education and healthcare, so the quality of your labor force has improved. Maybe there's been discovery of new natural resources. Um, also, any improvements, significant improvements in technology, will lead to a growth in the production possibilities of this. Um, economy. Now, a growth in production possibilities is illustrated by an outward shift of the PPC. You see the PPC shifts outward if there's a growth in production possibilities. So, to wrap up, the PPC model can be used to illustrate the following concepts. The first one is the concept of opportunity cost, because increasing production of one product requires foregoing production of a few units of the other product. 
Um, scarcity can also be a concept that's visually illustrated using the PPC because there's a limit to how much of each product can be produced. There's a limit to the combination of both products that can be produced due to the existence of limited resources. The concept of choice can also be uh, visually represented using the PPC model. Choice exists due to the scarcity of resources. Choices have to be made about which combinations of products will be produced. Um, the concept of unemployment of resources. We know that any point inside the PPC represents a combination of output where resources are not fully employed or not used efficiently. It can also be used to illustrate the concept of efficiency. Points on the PPC itself represent combination of output where resources are fully employed and used at maximum efficiency. And any inefficiency in the use of resources will result in combinations of output inside the PPC. The concept of actual growth can also be visually represented using the PPC model. We know that moving from any point inside the PPC to a point on the PPC represents actual growth or growth in actual output. This is what actual growth means, growth in the actual output being produced. The concept of growth in production possibilities can also be visually represented. Um, as I mentioned earlier, any increase in the quantity or quality of resources or significant improvements in technology will shift the whole PPC outwards. This represents a growth in production possibilities or a growth in potential output. So we need to distinguish between growth in actual output and growth in potential output.